Welcome to Put This On, I'm Jesse Thorne. This season on this show, we're visiting some of the world's great style cities as chosen by our viewers. And as you can see, I'm in New York City on the High Line. New York is where everything crashes together, the high, the low, style, fashion, and we figured what better way to investigate that than to go thrifting. So, we're gonna be joined by some of our favorite bloggers from Street Etiquette to do some serious thrift store shopping. Then we're gonna visit a tailor, Leonard Logsdale, to find out what's inside that suit jacket. That's all coming up on this episode of Put This On. My name is Jay Kaz, and this is my clothing shop on Mott Street in New York City. I've always been a creative junkie, and the only way to fulfill that habit is by creating. I don't consider it as much a shop as I do a home, and it's a, a home is an extension of someone. So people come here to have an espresso. There are guys that come here every week to have an espresso or a scotch that have never bought anything from us. We don't care. I tend to stick to a classic shape, classic design. I don't think men's clothing needs to be um, over-designed as much as it needs to be edited. But color is something that um, I'm fond of. I, I, I think it's important and it, it's something that lacks a lot in men's clothing. I get excited when I see anyone on the street dressed in something they own. And that can be in any category from punk to hipster to classically dressed um, preppy, anything. But if they own it, if they really own it, it doesn't look like they're trying then for me that, that excites me. I get excited when I see that. One of my favorite menswear blogs is Street Etiquette. One of the things that I love about it is the way that they combine influences from all over everywhere. A lot of times combining secondhand pieces to create great outfits. So I thought that while we were here in New York City, we could meet up with Josh and Trav, the creators of the blog, and do some thrift shopping. Let's go meet them. Hey guys. Hey, how's it going? Jesse. Josh. Hi, Josh. Travis. Nice hey, to meet Travis. You. Nice, to meet, nice to meet you guys in real life. I know, it's cool. So let me ask you this. Are you guys prepared for a thrifting contest? We've got about two hours to get all the thrifting done that nice. we possibly can here within a two block radius of where we are. You guys ready for some <laughs> tips and tricks and yeah, see if we can come out with the best stuff in 120 minutes? Yeah, man. This is what Let's we do. Live. Yeah. This is your home turf and there's two of you and one of me, so you guys kind of have an advantage, but let's go. Shake on it, yeah. <laughs> I like this. One thing is that when you're buying something made of wool, you always have to check for holes. And when you're checking for holes, a good thing to do is hold it up to the light because you will see the thin spots better. And this actually looks pretty clean. Look too small. Look a little too small. This color is pretty cool. The fit doesn't look too bad, so I'll try it on. I can tell that once it's tailored, if I get it taken in, it'll give me like a sculpture look, like of a blazer. So, jackets like this, I, I normally just button the middle button, the same way I would wear a blazer, and try to see that, you know, how it will fit. But the shoulders are pretty good, and I think it'll be like a pretty cool jacket. If there's anything that you can depend on finding at a vintage store, it is pea coats and varsity jackets. I actually really like this one. I, I like this varsity thing that says champs on it. I kind of feel like if you're gonna buy a secondhand varsity jacket, it should be for something that it is really obvious you did not actually earn a varsity letter in. So for me, I think hockey is a pretty suitable one. Sometimes you're just looking for the craziest like fabrics you can find. Maybe something like this, this tapestry vest is pretty crazy. Kind of has a Aladdin vibe to it. All the fans of Aladdin and Disney, fuck you. Know? <laughs> so I'm a fan of eBay, I'm always on eBay, but you could rarely find something like this. Just because the labels, there is no label on this. So trying to find something like this would take you a pretty much a long time or you'll never find it on eBay. So that's kind of the perks of coming into a vintage store. When you're looking at secondhand shoes, watch out for shoes that are really shiny like these. This is corrected grain leather. That means that they essentially take lousy leather, buff off the upper layer, and then replace it with shiny plastic. You can see that's not a shine shoe, but it's still really shiny. It's a piece of crap.
set. Yes, sir. One sweater, please. Pretty good shirts here. Ascot Chang, Paul Stewart, TM Lewin. Nothing quite worth taking home. Except for this. Turnbull and Asser. I'll take that home with me. You guys ever do the pinch test on a jacket? This is how you can tell if a jacket is canvassed inside. This is actually a pretty good jacket. So if you grab the outside here, you can feel if you grab the lining with one hand and the outside with another hand, you can feel that there's three layers here. So you can feel that outside pulls right yes. away. Yeah. Whereas if you grab this, this is a cheaper jacket. It's only two layers, see? Mm. Feel the middle doesn't come mm. apart from the outside. That's because this outside fabric is only attached to the canvassing at a few strategic points so that it floats more easily. Gotcha. It's a sign of a good quality jacket. This is a pretty much a traditional pinstripe trouser, but it has a cargo pocket. I just thought that was cool. You know? I'm gonna slim it down a bit just because that's how I wear my my pants. But you know, the waist is good for twelve dollars. I mean, it's a pretty good deal. Okay, so I have to say that I'm not actually buying anything in this store, but I think it might be the nicest one we've been in. I really like the stock in here. If I lived in New York City, I would definitely come back. And one of the most important lessons that I think that you can learn as a thrifter is that sometimes the most successful trip is the one where you don't buy anything. You have to expect that most of the time you're going to come home with nothing. Thank you. Well guys, yeah. dusk is falling. I think that means the end of our thrifting adventure. Shall we see what we got? Sure. You want to start? I got these the cargo trousers we were talking about earlier. Excellent. Pretty cool. Very good. Yeah. What'd you get, Josh? Got this nice Aladdin looking vest. Mm -hmm. Pretty Seems dope. like you got something else yeah, in there. Yeah, man. I mean, uh, I got up to an early start, you know, this morning. <laughs> so I, I popped in and I got myself you know, this heavy wool camel hair. Trousers, you know. Wait, so by got off to an early start, you mean got off to an early start of cheating? I mean, it's, it's all fair, man. It's all okay, fair. I got the um, Brooks Brothers cardigan, okay. the uh, Turnbull and Asser shirt. Right. I got these Filson trousers. Okay. Nice. And the Fiesta Resistance, the Bruce McCullough CD. Nice. Oh, nice. I think this Classic. thing might be out of print. That's true. Yeah. So who's the winner here? Us, basically, right? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining me on Put This On. Thank you, Jesse. It was really a Thank pleasure. Yeah. I'm Lewis Lapham, the editor of Lapham's Quarterly, formerly the editor of Harper's Magazine. When I was a, a, a freelance wandering journalist in the, in the 60s, I had various different costumes depending on where I was going. Kind of went in Rome. Uh, but my uh, natural inclination is to dress formally. I, I just feel that it, if you wear a suit, you can talk to anybody. It's a matter of manners. It's a matter of being polite. It's part of the conversation. And uh, my writing tends to be formal as well as the way I dress, also the way I approach people. If you can form your sentences with a certain style, in my view, so much the better. It gives you a certain degree of uh, confidence. Flaubert, the writer, he used to always carry at least two gold pieces in his pocket, and it gave him a sense of weight. Uh, it, it gave him a sense that he was something in the world. I enjoy dressing well. I, I take pleasure in a good suit. I feel uh, I'm equal to whatever task is likely to present itself. I'm prepared, at least in my own mind. A suit should look good off the rack. Then you should have it altered to look great. Budget $100 in about two weeks, because the transformation isn't free or instantaneous. I'm Jesse Thorne. This is Put This On. We're at Leonard Logsdale in New York City with 
Leonard Logsdale, and we're going to find out what's inside your suit jacket. Leonard, what are the essential pieces on the inside of the chest of a jacket? Well, the chest of the jacket, there is, there could be a fused chest, or there can be a floating chest, or it can be a completely canvassed garment. Well, the three examples we have here, one is completely fused from top to bottom. The other one, which is a more expensive garment, has a fused front, but also with a floating chest piece, and the one that I'm making is completely canvassed. And the idea is, as you go up the, up the scale, that you get uh, a body of a garment is built into it, so that when somebody's wearing it a few years' time, you still retain the shape. You can't get that with the fused. Let's tear this thing open and see what's Let's inside. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. This, okay. the, this is the fused one, and it's a new garment. And you can see, if we turn this inside out, it's, it's stuck completely to the fabric. And I may even be able to, well, I probably can't even pull it off through here. Sometimes these, these can break down when you send them to a cleaners or if you get caught in the rain, something like that. But for a hundred bucks or probably what this is, this actually is not a bad garment. Okay, let's take a look at a more mid-range piece. This is something you might buy at Saks or a, a mid-range department store uh, for 1500 bucks as part of a suit. We can see this one has a fusing, but a much softer fusing and it's going to make the jacket flow a little bit more. And it also has a floating chest piece in here, which also really doesn't do much. It's just there. It's, there's no shape to it. The idea is it would give it a little bit more body, but when you look at the front, I know this is an old coat, but as it lays there, it's pretty flat. Yeah. There's not a lot of life in it. Let's take a look at a piece that you're working on right now. This is a velvet, a velvet jacket, nice rich blue velvet jacket, and the canvas is all stitched by hand. And uh, you can see that there's a lot of care and attention to, uh, to this. It's like it's much like building a building. I mean, if you build a building but you don't put the guts inside, the thing's just going to break apart after a period, period of time. There's nothing different from that with the suit. It's what goes on the inside that makes the, the garment expensive, that makes it uh, makes it last. And the, and the shape that we put in there is built so that it goes round and cuts into the waist and puts some shaping in there. But, you know, we're talking at several thousand dollars here as opposed to, you know, a few hundred there. But there's a big difference. And if you can afford it, it's worth it because it then becomes something that you can, you can wear for the next 10, 15 years and still look good. So here's the question. If you're not going to a custom tailor, what can you do to determine whether you're buying something that at least has some of the qualities that are going into this piece. I think the bottom line is you've got to go with your gut. If you put a jacket on and you look in the mirror and you think, gee, I look really good in this, go with it. Well, Len, thank you so much for taking the time. It's been my pleasure. You can find more good tips on our blog at putthison.com.